At this point, we know that there are three servers in the ICFM2 three server topology. And again, you can see that in this diagram. The core server, the analytics server, and the data server all are Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6.x servers. Now the question is, how does this topology fit in with WebSphere? And of course, I mean the application server, that's WebSphere application server. So if you'd like to understand what is WebSphere? This is probably the best introductory book that's out there. And yes, it's old now. It's from 2005. But it explains very, very nicely the basic concepts. And in fact, it's really important to know that WebSphere is just an IBM brand. And it contains multiple products. The main product is called the application server. And you can see here there's one central product from which all the other WebSphere products feed. It's the main product. It is IBM's J2EE server, application server. Now, J2EE is, is, is old. That's from a 2005 sort of time frame. It, it is now referred to as a Java EE uh, application sort of server. But of course, it's not the only Java EE application server on the market. Oracle makes WebLogic, and they also make an open source free app application server called Glassfish, which also contains something called a web container, as well as Tomcat. And then separately, there is Red Hat's JBoss. Now, if you look at this listing here, you can see under app servers that IBM ranks with it was Web Server application server at 28% of the market, number two behind. WebLogic by Oracle, and then JBoss, which comes in at number five with 2.6%, according to a Gartner report from 2015. And here is a quick comparison showing those products in terms of what their capabilities are along the vertical axis here. And for more information, you can check this presentation by Roman Karkovsky, which will show you a lot of detail concerning these products and their positioning. But for our purposes, I wanted to show you a particular diagram, which you can find on this web page here. And it shows you the kind of overall all approach architecture that your web client is going to take in order to get a hold of our ICFM application. The you have to keep in mind that here is our WAS server, and it is an application server. What is an application in this context? Well, it's Java. It's Java code that's running. It's packaged up, and it's running as a quote-unquote application. And here is where the first sort of problem comes in. If you're this web client out here, and you want to talk to this application server, there is no way for your web server, which in our case is Apache, and it has several enhancements that IBM has included, and it is then called IHS, or IBM HTTP Server. Notice that the client doesn't call, it doesn't talk to the application server directly, and instead it goes to a web server, because this is ultimately a web request in most cases. ICFM is a web-based application in a lot of ways. So what it does is it contacts IHS, and then the first problem comes in. There, the web server IHS has absolutely no idea how to serve Java code. This is all Java here. And the web server doesn't know what to do with Java. What the web server does is it loads HTTP data. And usually that comes from its own hard drive. Actually, it'd be sort of drawn like this somewhere inside the hard drive of this machine. It pulls that and then it serves it back to the, to the web client. But in this case, in ICFM, we need to get Java code converted into HTTP, and that's done through this thing called a plugin. And then once it's in HTTP, then it can be sent back to our browser. And that's why you see this plugin here. The plugin goes inside Apache and allows communication to that application server. And it's actually very easy to see this if you open up httpd.conf. That is the main configuration file for Apache slash IHS. And you go to the very bottom of the file. And then notice what you see. First of all, it's going to do a load module. And what this is doing, this SO is the binary 
that loads WebSphere application server. That's why it says WAS. It is loading the binary piece. That's the plugin itself that we just saw in the pre previous diagram. And then separately, there's a file here called plugin-configuration, which is hugely important in, in diagnosing problems and also getting WAS to work at all. Because it is sort of the mastermind, it is that box that we just saw uh, con controlling everything we need. And by box, of course, I mean this one here. This plugin it ref refers to the binary and all of the configuration information. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you go to this book, which is the WebSphere Application Server 8.5 Administration Configuration Guide for the Full Profile, and go down to page 451, you'll see this really nice diagram, which explains what's going on here. And we haven't yet seen nodes and servers, so and cells, so we need to see that first, and then we'll come back to explain what this is. So once you have was running, you'll have servers, nodes, and cells. Now you might be wondering, well, where's the application? It's an application server, so where are those at? And it turns out that it's actually the case that we have a kind of problem with multiple terminology. What do I mean by that? Well, each server runs an application, so that the applications go inside the server. If you have three applications, they would all run, say, on a given server. Or you can have another three applications running on this server. Now, this is a Java EE server. It's not a physical or virtual machine. It's a, it's a JVM. Each of these servers are JVMs, Java Virtual Machines. They are not physical machines. That's down here. And the purpose of a server is to run an application. And notice that you can have more than one server, Java EE server, on a given physical or virtual machine or operating system. And this is <clears throat> where things start to get interesting because w you can start doing what's called clustering where you take what are where nodes come into play so you have these nodes where the servers sit on top of so a node is simply a reference to an installation of websphere application server so if you install websphere application server twice on the same machine then you would have two nodes on the same machines you'd have one and you'd have another one here so every time you install WAS on a given machine, you have a node. And then you put the servers inside your node. And remember that the applications are up on top here, inside the server. So this is, again, this is where things start to get interesting because if you create more than one node and you put them together, you can create cells. And once you have that structure set up, now you're talking about taking an application and having your application span more than one physical server and that's called horizontal scaling. So this is a really interesting way to get your applications to respond more quickly and with better uptime of course. So this is interesting because the clustering I'm talking about here is represented in this scenario here. So we have the cell it's running on a system A, as it says here. This is like a VM or like an actual virtual machine, not a Java virtual machine, but a, like a physical system or a, a, a virtual machine running on a hypervisor. System A, system B, and system C. Inside that system, we have WebSphere application server running. What's it running? Well, it's running nodes, and each of the servers are running inside a node. So you have server A and, and uh, well, C and E. But notice that you have... On system C, you have a node 1, just like you have a node 1 here, but server A and B work together in what's called a cluster. And that, in case, system, this is useful because if system C goes down, then system B can still take over for system, system C. They basically are balancing the load. And all of that it happens thanks to the WebSphere application server deployment manager, which typically runs on a totally different system here. So this run is running here and then these nodes are uh, set up so that they c contact the deployment manager and this arrow I've drawn here is actually trying to show it's what something's not here called the deployment or the node agent the node agent connects into the deployment, deployment manager and it's this is called federating it's similar to joining a computer to a, an active directory domain once you federate the machine the system here it will become part of 
this deployment manager and this is called a managed network or a managed node in in the case of system you know b and c showing node one and two and so on those would all be federated into the deployment manager they're all managed nodes and i mentioned what managed nodes because that takes us back to this image here where we can see the setup that icfm uses where if you're on the analytics server that server will connect over to the core server because there's a deployment manager running here on the analytics server so it can connect to this node agent which is running on that core server in that again is called the managed node and then it can, if you make a change to this configuration file the plugin dash cfg xml we'll talk about that more if you make a change to that on any node at, that the deployment manager is aware of it can send it off to the node agent and the node agent can update each of the nodes and I should point out too that in this topology this machine here is considered a remote machine you can see that described here that this diagram shows a typical remote topology because the web server is on a separate machine and in case you were curious this note here about see the unmanaged image all that means is that you have a structure too called unmanaged where the deployment manager uh, is either not in use uh, where you have something called standalone uh, or it, it's simply a, a machine that doesn't have a deployment manager but for our purposes we do use the managed web server uh, configuration for icfm so just as a quick recap and practical example remember that you're looking at profile at sort of the top level and the profile contain cells and the cells will contain nodes and then the nodes will contain servers those are java ee or jvm servers and then what do the servers contain well they contain the apps which are also called modules and the modules or the apps are also called ears or war files we'll talk about those more later but essentially what you do is you take an ear file or a war file which is really just a zip package of all of your java code and you deploy it onto your application server and if you go to the core server you can actually confirm that this, this is how it works if you go to opt IBM websphere app server here's profile and you have a profile here called SPSS profile and inside that SPSF profile you go into its configuration and you'll see cells so now we're here and there's a cell called the core cell and then inside that it you'll see the nodes well we have a node called SPSS node and which is here and then what do the nodes uh, contain well they contain servers when well, there's a server in here called SPSS server so there there's your server and then of course what it's doing is it's running an application and this is one of the files in that application